And the mind that falls asleep and dreams of a separate world, a, a virtual reality that's not real, it's dreaming of separation from God, it has a very deep hurt way down in the mind, very deep. But this belief in loss, we know as, as we've gone through this human experience, we felt lost. Maybe it was with a parent, maybe it was with a child, maybe it was with a lover or, or different lovers. Maybe it, you can go back to relationships where you had such high hopes for a particular relationship and then the relationship seemed to end. Either the, the person left or they died or whatever. It's this belief in loss. And there's a part in the Course in Miracles where Jesus says in the text, you have many strange beliefs, but perhaps the strangest of them all is the belief that you can lose the ones that you love. That's a very telling line from Jesus. This belief that we can lose the ones that we love. Think of the great sages. Think of Ramana Maharshi. Remember Ramana Maharshi's final days when he got very thin, seemed to have a tumor and became like a skeleton. And the de devotees were all gathered around him and some of them were just crying. Because, why? Loss. How did the Apostles feel when Jesus was taken away? When they watched what happened in Calgary? They watched the body of Jesus slump over there, bleeding. What do you think Mary Magdalene felt? What do you think Mother Mary felt? Sadness is always based in a belief in the mind. The emotions come from something much deeper. The belief that you could lose your connection with God is the most catastrophic feeling or belief. And that's why we have a, a subconscious. The pain of believing you could actually separate from God was so intense that it was pushed out of awareness, completely out of awareness, and covered over with this entire substitute belief system and then this entire, entire matrix world is all because of this belief in loss. You might experience betrayal. We think we get betrayed by persons, by people who promise us things and don't follow through, say things they don't mean them. We have this deep sense of betrayal, but it's a betrayal if you trace it all the way back, it's with source, it's with God. The belief that we could be betrayed by God the anger of separation, the pain of separation projected onto God. Why would you leave me here? I mean, I've heard people say, why did you even create me? Meaning, create this person and leave me in such a terrible place as Earth. <laughs> it's like, what kind, now you know why people are atheists. <laughs> they would rather not believe in God than think that, oh, God abandoned me, abandonment issues, betrayal issues, loss issues. Think of, these are the things that Shakespeare wrote all his plays about, right? That's what Shakespeare was writing about. All these things, if you take them deep enough, it takes you back to this belief in separation from God. Some people call it the fall from grace. You can call it anything you want. Tiny mad idea. I remember one time I was in Wisconsin and I was quoting the Course, uh, I said, Into eternity where all is one, there crept a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. This man was there, Al, he was like, he went ballistic, crept! He started screaming at me, crept! Crept! This was, into eternity where all is one, there crept a tiny mad idea. He was furious at the creeping. <laughs> he was furious. The idea that there could be separation from Source is huge. And Jesus is telling us, that's why we have A Course in Miracles, because you do believe that it's true. He's telling us it's not really true. He's saying, take my hand, I'll show you. Let's go down into the mind, let's go into that subconscious and I'll light it up. 
If you'll let me have free access to your subconscious, I will light it up and show you that there is no darkness. Perf the Bible said, perfect love cast out fear. And so, if you'll come with me on this journey, I will show you that you are perfectly innocent. You never sinned. You never separated. It, separation is absolutely impossible. That's what this journey is about, coming to the recognition that the separation never occurred. But it's also a practical one. You have to pay attention to those feelings because those feelings tell you what you believe. And you do have to go in and make another choice, as she said. You do have to go in and see the world a different way. You do have to go in and unplug from the ego. And Jesus even says, I cannot take your fear away. I can help you look at the conditions by which you set the fear up. And I can help you make, then make another decision. But I cannot take your fear away because I would be tinkering with the basic law of cause and effect. If, if you needed me to take your fear away, then that would just prove that, that you aren't powerful, that you need some kind of a rescue. And we do need help, for sure. <laughs> but we don't need one of our equals, an equal brother, which is what Jesus is. Jesus wasn't God. He was the Son of God. And he knew who he was, so he has the wisdom to teach us how to unplug from the ego. But he's not going to come and take the fear away. You have to do it willingly. You have to do it voluntarily. You have to see what was done and you can unmade, unmake what was made with careful instruction. And that's why it takes so much mind training and that's why it takes discipline. But I'm telling you tonight that there's no other thing that you can put your value and attention to on earth that would bring you as much as escape from the matrix. Because that's what your heart is asking for. It wants to escape the matrix. It wants to remember heaven. All this other stuff is just a sideshow. It's not, it doesn't have any validity. It doesn't have any value. It doesn't have any purpose. Okay, there you go. That's the keys to the kingdom.